I bought a broken amp and today we're gonna fix it. <laughs> I have to pee first though. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain related guitar gear. I record it with a simple setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. Ah, bah, bah, bah. So if you're into East Ender Thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs and dudes that definitely wash their hands after they use the bathroom, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. So today guys, we have something uh, that we've never done on the channel before. And that is try to fix something that is broken. So I happened to stop by Guitar Center yesterday uh, just to take a quick look around, see if there was anything worth checking out. And it turns out that uh, there was. I just happened to be walking by the used section, which uh, in my particular Guitar Center is usually kind of a wasteland. If we're being 100% honest, not typically a whole lot worth looking at there, but I couldn't help but notice uh, this orange dark terror for one particular reason, the price tag. I immediately saw that $261 price tag and I was like, uh, I need this right now. Why would, why is this not sold already? But when you look at the fine print as you often should, and as impulsive people like me tend to sometimes gloss over, it is listed as scratch and dent because it actually doesn't work. So luckily I was smart enough to actually read over this tag before I ran to the front desk in order to purchase this amp. So I already knew what I was getting myself into. And I figured at that price, it's kind of worth the risk. Now I know standard troubleshooting steps when it comes to tube amplifiers, which is kind of what I'm gonna walk through with you guys today in hopes of, you know, maybe this being a simple fix. But if it's not, I have an extremely reputable, solid and reliable amp tech named Mike Wagner of Wagner Amp Repair right here in Erie, Pennsylvania. So if I can't figure out how to fix this little bad boy, we will link up with Mike. We will get this amp in his hands and allow him to work his magic on it so that uh, I can finally get you a demo on one of these things because I have wanted to check one of these things out for a long time myself. And you guys have asked me numerous times to check it out here on the channel. So I figured, you know what? There is no way that we can't win, right? And while you're at it, do me a huge favor, go to Facebook and like Wagner Amp Repair on Facebook. It would mean a lot to me because Mike is one of the nicest human beings on this planet. And he is also an incredibly knowledgeable and capable amp repair tech. So if you need somebody to fix your busted tube amp, hit Mike up, he'll take care of you. So with that being said, Let's start. All right, guys, so the first thing that I'm going to do, I've already done this, but I'm gonna plug a power cable in and I'm gonna see if this thing powers up at all. Power cable is attached and nothing. I do hear some electrical buzzing though. So something is at least going on inside of this thing. Let's put it on standby. Yeah, I'm not sure if my microphone will pick that up, but I'm definitely hearing some sort of electrical buzzing inside of the amplifier. So our next step is uh, we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. Now I'm gonna detach that power cable and I am going to flip that power switch on real quick in hopes that that drains uh, some of the power that's in the capacitors, but that is not going to drain it completely. There is a procedure to drain the capacitors completely. I don't know how to do it, but I do know that I can at least take this amp out of its shell and I know how to touch it safely without electrocuting myself. But do not take this as a guide on how to do any of this, guys, because I am not the person to show you how to do this. I am just doing it for the sake of the video. So do not take anything that I say as advice. Do not hold me to any of my words here. This is purely for entertainment purposes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna get rid of these tags. They have served their purpose. The next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip the amp over and back by, let me get this so you guys can actually see it in the camera, back by the mains input, uh, there is a mains fuse. And we are gonna take that out and we're gonna see, first of all, if we can get it out. Uh-oh, oh, there we go, okay. It's not supposed to turn that much. So we're gonna check that mains fuse and it looks to be like it's still intact. And that's not surprising because we were hearing some electrical noise. See if the camera can zoom. There's no way the camera's gonna pick up on that. 
but the fact that we were getting some sort of uh, electrical noise when I was trying to power it on at all is a good indicator that this mains fuse is still intact because you would not get that. Uh, it would not be passing signal properly if it wasn't. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put that back into place. I have a suspicion that a power tube could have possibly taken out a fuse on the board. So that's what we're gonna check for next. And I am going to start by flipping this over and I'm actually going to remove the bottom panel of this amp. All right, so we are going to set all of our screws in the same place from this bottom panel. Okay, so bottom panel is off. Let's take a look and see if we can notice anything pretty much right off the bat by looking in here. And uh, guess what guys, I am pretty sure that I am correct. I'm gonna try to get it so you guys can see. There's a fuse right here. Notice I have my hand behind my back. Again, I'm not giving you guys any sort of instructions, but uh, I've always been told, keep one arm behind your back when you are working on an amp that does not have the capacitors drained. That way you don't touch the amp with both hands, creating a circuit between your body and the amp in order for it to pass current through. So we are only going to use one hand, but looking in here, not actually touching anything, there's a fuse on this board and guess what? I can see that the tip of it is burnt. So we now have to remove that fuse. And I am going to use a rubber handled screwdriver in order to touch that fuse. Obviously everything is good. Um, and we are going to try to pop that sucker out of there using just one hand, which is always a treat. All right, so fuse has been removed. And I can see that it is blown. Now, a lot of people, when fuses are blown, first off, let me see if I can get the camera to focus in on it so you guys can see it. If not, I will try to take a close-up picture so that you can see it. But yeah, this fuse is burnt. Now, a lot of people, when they find a burnt fuse, the first thing that they do is they just replace it and they try to turn the amp on again anyways. Typically when you find a burnt fuse, that's a good sign that you should just take your amp to a tech, especially if you're like me and you don't actually know what you're doing. Again, I am doing this knowing the risk that I run and knowing that this is just for entertainment purposes, hoping that we can get this amp working with a simple fix. Again, I'm pretty positive that it's just the power tubes, but guys, fuses don't pop for no reason. They pop because they're keeping something worse from happening to your amp. So if you keep putting fuses in and they keep popping, that means that something on your amp is about to go catastrophically wrong. And the more times you put fuses in it and the amp takes those fuses out, the closer you are to really damaging a much, much more expensive component of your amplifier. So if you pop a fuse on your amp for any reason, I highly, highly suggest, and actually I really am kind of just begging you to make sure that you take it to an amp tech. Don't try to fix it yourself. The only reason I'm doing this is because I know that if I do mess anything up and I have a somewhat basic knowledge of what I should do here, that Mike Wagner is gonna be there to save my butt. And if I do wreck something on this amp, you know, I can live with that. So this fuse has been removed. The next step is to replace this busted fuse with a good working fuse of the same exact type. So this appears to be a T4AL 250 volt fuse. And I actually think that I have one of these because my Mesa Badlander blew a fuse because it had a bad power tube recently. And uh, these were the fuses that it took in the mains section of the amp. So I might have one of these on hand. Let me go look. Three hours later. None of these are the right one, actually. I'm pretty sure that I have some more. One eternity later. One thing I did forget to check, guys, is this one does have a fuse holder compartment on the back of the main jack here. Uh, we're gonna pop that off. And maybe this extra is the right one that we need. Ha, T1. So that must be for the mains. And this is, again, this is a T4. So we have to have the right one. But just a handy tip, if you guys didn't know that, uh, a lot of amps have these little fuse holder compartments on the back of the mains jack there. So the more you know. Okay guys, so I have what we in the business here like to call 
a donor amp. This is my Jim Root uh, Terror, and we are going to see if it has the same fuse in the bottom. And if it does, we are going to use it temporarily in order to see if we can get this baby working again. Um, I have no idea if these circuits are the same or similar, but what I do see is a fuse in the exact same spot on here. In fact, the layouts on these amplifiers are very similar. I won't be able to tell if that's the same fuse without pulling it out first. So again, let's do this hand behind our back. Definitely don't make contact with the amp with any part of our body. We're just going to pull that fuse out and check. What do you know? It is the same T4 AL fuse. So that is good to know. We are going to move our Jim Root Terror off to the side here. And we are now going to place the fuse back in the amp. Okay, so our good fuse is in our dark Terror now. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually gonna take the power tubes out of the Jim Root amp as well because I know that the power tubes in that amp are good to go. So if we swap over the new power tubes and it blows a fuse again, that is the extent of my knowledge on how to troubleshoot this thing and we will be taking it over to Mike. So let's do that now. We are going to button the bottom on both of these amps back up. Basically, best case scenario, what I was thinking when I purchased the amp uh, might be turning out to be the real case scenario. And anytime the best case scenario is the real life scenario, I am quite thankful. Let's see if we can find the screw we dropped. Dropping a black screw on a gray carpet is always a good time. Now that I've generated plenty of static by rubbing my hands over a dry carpet, let's go ahead and touch an amp. All right, while we're at it, we're gonna button up the bottom of the gym root as well, because if we don't do it now, I am bound to lose those screws and never find them. All right, guys, with that done, we are now going to remove the top portion of these amps. And I'm gonna swap over the good working tubes to the dark tear to see if that fixes the issue. And I'm going to stop talking. And typically guys, it is a good idea, especially when you're working with small parts, screws like this to have some sort of container to keep everything in that way. Nothing rolls off the table and you lose it forever, much like me losing that screw. Okay, so just like that, the top portion of this amp should now just lift right off like so. Set that aside. And we are not gonna remove those tubes just yet. We're gonna move this to the side and we're gonna do the same on the bad amp, the broken Dark Terror. I feel like I'm on a cooking show right now. The only thing I'm cooking up is some bad advice. And just like that, we've got a stubborn screw that doesn't want to come out. All right, so that's not going back on. It'd be pretty easy to tell where it was supposed to go. So let's continue. All right, so here is our amp with the bad EL84s. We are going to take these out and Again, I'm assuming, I don't know that that's exactly what's wrong with it, but I have a suspicion. So uh, EO84s have been removed from the bad amp and we are going to swap over the good EO84s just to test. Remember, this is just for a quick test because if it works after swapping these EO84s over, uh, I'm gonna buy some new tubes for it and put it in there and have, uh, have Mike bias it up for me. Uh, our gym root, we are going to set off to the side and we are gonna test it out. Moment of truth. All right, guys, I am going to make sure that the power switch is off and that it's in standby. I have connected the power switch. Real quick, let's plug in a speaker cable and Let's hold our breaths. Here we go. Okay, that tripped me out for a second because the light isn't working, but the tubes are heating up, which I don't know if you'll be able to see that with all the lights that I have going, 
The tubes are heating up. Okay, so just the light. I can live with the light not working for now, but we gotta test this thing out with the guitar, see if it works. All right, guys, so this is going to be the moment of truth. I have my Happy Cable Company cable here, and I have my LTD Phoenix Black Metal. Before we switch this out of standby, I'm gonna pull all these knobs back because I don't even know what knob does what. We're gonna flip it out of standby, and we're gonna hope for the best. Here we go. All right, so we still do not have any sound. I don't think I put the mains fuse back in all the way correctly. <laughs> all right, give me a second. Told you guys, I have no business being in the side of the, inside of these amps as much as the next person. I really don't. But I do like to tinker with things and try to fix them myself. So let's try that again. Okay, let's turn that volume down first. Let's turn that gain down. Uh, we have a working amplifier, guys, I think. We're gonna have to play it for a little bit, make sure. All right, so sorry, I don't have a proper microphone on the cabinet. I am just really happy that this thing is working at the moment, if we're being completely honest, guys. Let's check that seven watt setting. All right, back to the 15 watt. All right, guys. Our amp is officially working again, which means I was right. I was right. I'm pretty happy if you can't tell. I love it when I'm able to uh, at least diagnose things on my own. It just makes me feel accomplished. It makes me feel like I know something, even when I don't. So uh, yeah, hope that this was entertaining. Um, I hope that my tips, not anything that I did here on this amplifier, but the things that I told you about uh, fuses going, the things that I told you about making sure to match fuses like for like. If you didn't already know that stuff, guys, hopefully that's knowledge that you will, you know, keep in the back of your mind in case you ever do have an issue with your tube amp. And if you ever do have an issue with your tube amp, go ahead, go to Mike Wagner's Facebook page for his amp repair service, Wagner Amp Repair. I will link it down below in the description and like it because Mike is extremely generous with his time. And if you message him and ask him some troubleshooting, questions I guarantee you that he will get back to you and he will try to help out as best he can because he's just that type of dude so uh yeah I guess now we've got a dark terror in-house that we can review you guys have been asking for that one for a long time so uh I'm gonna get a new indicator light for it some new power tubes for it we're gonna put it back together we're gonna have a good time Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, if you enjoyed this kind of video, first off, let me know in the comments because I'd love to do more stuff like this. I like doing things that are not the same thing that I always do. I like trying new video ideas and hopefully they help you and you guys find them entertaining. So again, let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this type of thing. And if you want to help out the channel in any other way, down in the description of this video are all my affiliate links, including Zounds and Sweetwater. Anytime you click on those affiliate links and you get something for yourself, costs you nothing extra, and it goes a long way in supporting this channel, and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.